Look at this. These are simulated particles flying around, driven by distance-dependent forces of mutual attraction. Here is another example simulating a physical system. The Sun in the center has Earth orbiting it with Moon flying around Earth. The simulation preserves the Moon's trajectory to help us understand its motion. Honestly, the distances and speeds do not really match with reality here, but I think we can sacrifice a bit of accuracy for better visualization. One more. A ball falling on the ground. The ball has to fight against gravity and uh, resistance, which is why the ball on the left-hand side loses energy, and thus the at altitude, at a faster rate than the ball on the right-hand side. However, when we add elasticity to the game and have the ball on the right-hand side lose 50% of its energy at each bounce, this situation reverses. It now stops bouncing very quickly. This last example simulates a more complex collision of three objects. The ball on the right-hand side is much, much lighter than the one in the simulation on the left-hand side. What you have seen is a demonstration of what JetBrains MPS can do in the field of simulating physical systems. More specifically, the languages and tooling used here focus on the domain of mechanics, which implies objects with classical physical properties like mass, velocity, rotation and such interact through forces and collisions. The physicist who creates the simulation can specify the starting parameters of the simulation using an intuitive high-level programming language. I dare to call it a domain-specific language, DSL for short. The language supports the notions typical for physical simulations. You define objects and their physical properties. Objects may inherit properties from other generic objects to avoid repetition. Additionally, objects may define visual qualities such as shape and color to help the presentation of the simulation at runtime. Different types of forces can be defined and then applied to objects. These forces can either be static over time or change the value either in time or based on the changes in the simulated world itself. Position of objects can be expressed in a several different ways. Vectors and math notations are supported as first-class citizens. The editor assists the user to insert valid code and select the relevant options. It pre-fills default values, checks the code for errors, and, when instructed, it can compute and convert coordinates thanks to the built-in math expression interpreter. If there was just one aspect of the language that I could highlight, I would choose the support for physical units. Meters, seconds, kilograms, are undoubtedly essential to physics. Any system that is supposed to define physical simulations must thus support physical units. MPS, thanks to its flexibility, let us define the language in a way that allows values to have physical units associated. Physical units are grouped into what we call dimensions, such as length, time, weight, etc. With conversion ratios defined between units belonging to the same dimension. This enables the physicists to freely combine units of the same dimension in expressions. MPS can, when instructed, convert these expressions into values using the basic unit. Complex units or better call them computed units, such as meters per second or kilometers per hour, are also supported. And you can go much further. The type system can accept arbitrary computations as long as the resulting type matches the expectations for the particular physical value. Yes, this expression can also be converted. 
I hope you liked this little demonstration. This was a small teaser showing you language engineering and MPS applied to the domain of physics. The project is available on GitHub, so feel free to try it out for yourself. Or check out our website to see how MPS can be applied to other domains – insurance, tax legislation modeling, government, bioinformatics, mechanical engineering or medical software. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.